Your brothers and sisters, obviously, as Sheikh Yasser Burjas had mentioned, you know, a few weeks ago when we did the Wednesday conversations, as the environment around us is an environment of a holiday that obviously explains the large number of, of kids in the masjid today, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, that it's an opportunity for us to have discussions. And obviously when it's Christmas season, there are multiple layers of that discussion. One layer of that discussion is to look at the origins of a holiday, right? And to see where it actually rises from. Another layer of that discussion is how do Muslims reconcile not celebrating Christmas with their professed love for Isa Islam, for Jesus, peace be upon him. And then of course the discussions about how Muslims can maintain their identity while still being friendly and good and kind to their neighbors, while still preserving their own religion and their own identity. And the conversations that start to arise about, well, what does Isa alayhi salam mean to you? You don't celebrate Christmas. You can explain that historically, logically. Uh, you can sort of, uh, you know, go through the different reasons. But what is your version of Christ? What is your love of Jesus, peace be upon him? And how do you reconcile your belief in him and not attribute certain things to him? And so in the spirit of these conversations that we have with our coworkers and our friends and our neighbors, it's important for us to talk about who Isa salam is to us and who Isa salam in fact was in his own words and what the miracles of Isa salam are, that getting through the holiday, the commercialization of a holiday and everything in between to the man himself and to what his mission actually was. Now for this khutbah, I want to focus on something very specific, which is his miracles and then his manners, with some emphasis on the second one, especially for Muslims. Because neither of those two things are random. His miracles are not random, and he is a prophet, alayhi salam, with many miracles. A prophet who Allah speaks about his miracles in great detail. Some miracles found in the Qur'an and in the sunnah of the Prophet sallam, that are not even found in Christian literature, right? Or at least in the Bible, and as it exists today, the interpretations and extrapolations of the Bible, right? These miracles that are upheld. But then the second part of that, his manners, and some of the ways that the Prophet ﷺ conveyed that to us and what that means for us. And so in that spirit, obviously, Islam does not see that the existence of such incredible miracles is a sign of a man who was divine himself. So his miracles are not a proof of divinity, but they are proof of divine mission. And his manners, just like the other prophets, when Allah gives us a window into the manners and into the character of the prophets that came before, they're not merely to be admired, but to be absorbed, to be lived in our own lives so that we can draw from the wisdom of Isa alayhi salam, this noble and mighty prophet that the Prophet sallallahu said that there is no person who is closer to Jesus, the son of Mary alayhi salam, because there is no prophet between he and I. A prophet who is mentioned in the Quran over 25 times. A prophet that some of you are named after. And subhanAllah, if we look around the Muslim world, you find the name Isa present throughout the Muslim world out of love and out of reverence uh, for this man alayhi salam. And it starts with the miracle of his birth. And obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that while we uphold the miracle of Isa salam being born to his pure mother, a virgin, Mary alayhi salam, who was mentioned in her own right, has an entire surah named after her, that the very first words that came out of the mouth of this man when he was a baby in the cradle were, Inni Abdullah, I am the servant of Allah. And there's, of course, in that a testimony of Tawheed, of monotheism and upholding monotheism, but also honoring his mother and immediately clearing his mother's name from the accusations that will come towards her, alayhi salam, may peace be upon her, when people accuse her of different things, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows the baby to speak immediately from the cradle and say, Inni Abdullah. And that is actually a form of honoring him. That is actually a form of upholding his honor as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَن يَسْتَنْكِفَ الْمَسِيحُ أَنْ يَكُونَ عَبْدًا لِلَّهِ وَلَا الْمَلَائِكَةُ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ That Isa alayhi salam is not too proud to be a abd of Allah, to be a servant of Allah, 
and not even the closest of the angels to Allah. They see it as a form of honor, and it is indeed a form of honor to be Abdullah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, of course, taught us to say what? To say, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Do not just say, he is the messenger of Allah, but rather say about me, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Testify that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the servant and the messenger of Allah. Because when Allah takes you as a abd, and you have a Rabb, and you have a Lord and a sustainer, that is who he is, then that is a form of honoring and elevating the person. And so Isa السلام, immediately says, Inni Abdullah. Hence his first miracle is documented in the Quran as such. And then you find the verse in Surah Ali Imran. وَرَسُولًا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ أَنِّي قَدْ جِئْتُكُمْ بِآيَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ أَنِّي أَخْلُقُ لَكُمْ مِنَ الطِّينِ كَهَيْئَةِ الطَّيْرِ فَأَنْفُخُ فِيهِ فَيَكُونُ طَيْرًا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ And a messenger to the children of Israel, Indeed, I will have come to you with a sign from your Lord that I design for you from clay that which is like the form of a bird, and then I breathe into it, and it becomes a bird by the permission of Allah. Know, by the way, that in mainstream Christianity, the, as it exists today, the first miracle of birth and speaking from the cradle as well as this fashioning of a bird from clay is not something that's actually upheld, which subhanAllah shows you another form of honoring Isa alayhi salam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues with the words of Isa alayhi salam in this regard. And he says, وَأُبْرِئُ الْأَكْمَهَ وَالْأَبْرَصَ وَأُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ And he said that I... I cure the blind and the leper and I give life to the dead by the permission of Allah. And I inform you about that which you eat and you store in your homes. And in that is a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you may believe. So Isa alayhi salam mentions these miracles and every single time by the permission of Allah, by the permission of Allah, by the permission of Allah. Now these miracles are not random. And there's something special about each and every single one of them that I want to go into for a moment. Number one, the ulama mentioned, the scholars mentioned that Isa السلام, is the last prophet to Bani Israel. And hence, the mu'jizat, the, the, uh, the, the miracles that were given to him were plentiful and comprehensive and so undeniable, as this is a proof for or against the people, as their prophet highlights things for them. And so Isa السلام, is given all of these different types of miracles Miracles that are not necessarily unique to him. But in fact, with Bani Israel, you find prophets of the past uh, that had similar miracles. So for example, the prophet Elijah, in the Bible, raised hundreds from the dead. He raised entire nations of people from the dead. He healed the blind. He called for rain, and it came. He stopped it all by the permission of Allah, brings fire from the sky. These are things that we find from the prophets of Bani Israel in regards to their miracles. And so... It's not a sign of his divinity, but rather it's actually something that you find with the prophets of Bani Israel that Allah gave them great miracles. Because Bani Israel was a nation of ajaib. They were a nation in which things appeared before them in certain ways. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned some of those things to us. Now, why a bird from clay? You start from that. Some of the scholars mentioned that, of course, as Isa السلام, is coming to these people, his main audience is Bani Israel. But at that time, you also have the Roman presence in Jerusalem. And as the Roman presence is now prominent in Jerusalem, you start to have sculptures that are prominent and Roman sculptures that are placed strategically by Herod around the city of Al-Quds. And of course, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would challenge such people to say, create on the day of judgment and they would not be able to create. And so Allah Azza wa gives a miracle to all of the people in that sense. That a bird is given life only by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, أُبْرِهُ akmaha, I cure al-akmaha, the blind. Now, the more common word for the blind is actually someone who is a'ma. A'ma. A'ma is someone who went blind later on in life. Okay? Here, you're talking about a person who is actually born blind and known their entire lives to not be able to see. Why is that important? Because there was a lot of trickery 
that was carried out by those who claimed to be healers in the time of Isa alayhi salam, right? It was, it was commonplace that someone would pretend that he was blind, he'd walk up to the person and this person would heal his eyesight in front of the people and then people would throw money at him so that he could do the same for them. They'd go and they'd bring their blind so that he could do the same for them. So subhanAllah as a hujjah, as a proof against the people, ubri'ul akmaha, the one who was born blind and not known as anything but blind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it so that Isa alayhi salam would rub their eyes and they would suddenly be able to see. Well, abrasa and the leper. And leprosy was very common in the time of Isa alayhi salam. Also a form of healing. And these people that would pretend to heal always had immediately after their fake healing a demand for money. <laughs> We healed you, now pay up. Throw us your gold, throw us your silver. And so the problem is, their attachment to dunya, their attachment to this world is causing them to cheat. And this was another way in which religion had become a product by which you could exploit the people. Similar to Quraysh in Mecca. They didn't care about these idols. They cared about the money that the idols gave them and the power and the authority that the idols gave them. So you had these people claiming to be able to heal and they immediately consumed the money uh, from the people. الْمَوْتَى Give life to the dead. And this is perhaps where it becomes very interesting. That Isa alayhi salam, just like other prophets from Bani Israel, a few of them was given this ability to raise someone who had passed away. Now what they would do is, of course they had a scheme here too, the scam was that someone would pretend to be dead and that at their funeral, the healer would come and he touched this person that suddenly died, right? Or that died yesterday, and the person rises. That's a heavier price. If you look at the menu board, curing leprosy, blindness, cure the person who died, bring them back to life. So Isa alayhi salam, Allah gave him a miracle that was more decisive than that where he could raise people that had died some time ago. And they even said to him, they said, إِنَّكَ تُحْيِي مَنْ كَانَ مَوْتُ قَرِيبٌ You only bring life to those that died recently. Because that was their scam. They knew their con. They knew how they were scamming the people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it so that Isa alayhi salam could go to the grave of a person who died hundreds of years ago and say, Bismillah, and raise that person from the dead. An amazing miracle. SubhanAllah, similar to when you say Musa alayhi salam, the miracle Allah gave Musa alayhi salam against the sorcerers of Pharaoh, the first people to recognize that this was truth was those who used to work the sorcery, that this is different. This is not the same. Just like the poets of Arabia were the first to recognize the, the miracle of the Qur'an, the healers at the time of Isa alayhi salam were the first to recognize the miracle that was given to Isa alayhi salam. After all of this, what did they say to him? Those healers, they said, no, no, this is just sorcery. He's just playing with people's eyes at this point. They still insisted on their disbelief. And the last miracle, This was scary to Bani Israel. I tell you what you store in your homes. This is scary to them because of the corruption that exists in the midst of them, right? And you think about what that means for Isa alayhi salam, unabbi'ukum bima ta'kuluna wa ma tadakhiruna fi buyutikum, that I inform you about that which you eat and that which you store in your homes. And so the miracles of Isa alayhi salam, each one of them fit a particular goal and a particular hujjah, a particular proof and all of them speak to the power of the one that sent him and sent the prophets before and sent the Prophet ﷺ after him and even his return السلام, the return of Isa السلام, all of it, every miracle that he comes with is one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unlocks great proofs and great blessings for the people through his return may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send his peace and blessings upon him now when it comes to his manners and this is something that's not as well known in terms of uh, hadith literature from the Prophet ﷺ describing the manners of Isa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam was an anti-dunya prophet. He was a zahid. He was an ascetic. That is the description of Isa alayhi salam. One narration the Prophet ﷺ called Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu Shibhi Isa ibn Maryam, the one who resembles Isa alayhi salam. 
Because Isa is an ascetic. So when you read about his wisdom, when you read his beautiful words, however they come to us, whether it's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ or narrations from the pious predecessors or narrations that made their way into the book that do not uh, undermine right, the thrust of his mission, they're all about the preference of the akhirah to this dunya, the preference of the hereafter to this world. Why? Because Isa Islam said to those who had manipulated the text, You place the world over your head and you've placed the hereafter under your feet. Your addic addiction to dunya, to the material world, has caused you to abandon even the most sacred of revelation and to use it to hurt and to harm and to exploit. And so with Isa alayhi salam, you find this to be a common theme in his descriptions as he teaches the people zuhd, asceticism, and not to attach themselves to this dunya too much. Now when it comes to his manners, remember one of the miracles that Allah mentions, that he was able to tell people what they had in their homes. The Prophet says in a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, from Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qala alayhi salatu wasalam, ra'a Isa ibn Maryam rajulan yasriq. Isa islam saw a man in front of him stealing. فَقَالَ لَهُ أَسَرَقْتَ So he said to him, did you steal? And the man said, كَلَّا وَاللَّهِ He said, no, by Allah, الَّذِي لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا هُو I swear by Allah, by the one in, by, by whom there is no God but him, I did not steal. Isa Islam was given the ability to know what people were storing in their homes at times. What did the Prophet Islam say that Isa Islam said? قَالَ عِيسَى آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ وَكَذَّبْتُ عَيْنِي said, I believe in Allah and I will consider my vision, my eyesight to not be truthful in this regard. What is this a lesson of? His husn al the good assumptions that he had of people. You know, imagine the, 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 the miracle that has been given to him. And in this regard, Isa salam is teaching what? Do not let your eyes fall on the ayyub, on the faults of people. Because if you let it constantly navigate the faults and the flaws of people, your heart will harden and you'll become ignorant of yourself and arrogant as well. The fact that even this Prophet of Allah is teaching us this. Before a world of social media, do not let your eye wander towards the faults and the flaws of people, whether it's virtually or in front of you. Instead, purify your heart and look to the world with a different type of vision. That's one of the manners that we learn from Isa alayhi salam. In another authentic hadith, Isa alayhi salam was walking and he saw a pig. He said, go in peace. So someone said to him, do you say to the pig, go in peace? So what did he respond? He said, I'm afraid to make my tongue or accustom my tongue to speaking ill, to speaking bad words. This Prophet of Allah, is trying to protect his eyes and protect his tongue. Two major lessons that we can learn from him, alayhi salam, that are conveyed to us by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in this regard. And it tells us something about him. And it tells us something about not letting a superiority or a perceived superiority cause you to belittle and to harm and to use the faculties that Allah gave you. This man, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave power to, to, to raise a dead person to life and to heal is worried about how he's using his tongue and his eyes. So what about us? What about us with our vision and with our speech and ensuring that we use it only in ways that are righteous? And there are multiple narrations, subhanAllah, and I'll end with this one. This is not a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, to be clear. It's one of the things that comes to us, and as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, that when we come across the narrations of Bani Israel, we affirm what is agreeable, but without a sense of certainty, we take the benefit of it, and we deny what undermines the very essence of the mission of monotheism and prophethood. That Isa ﷺ was once asked, how are you able to walk on water? You know, all these miracles that you do, how are you able to do all of these things? And Isa السلام, responded, قَالَ بِالْيَقِينَ He said, with yaqeen, with certainty. And the Hawariyu and the disciples responded and said, we also have it. And he said to them, 
Are stone, clay, and gold equal in your eyes? Do you see stone, gold, and clay in the same way? And they said, no. He said, they are in mine. Hubb dunya the love of this world, is the root cause of every disobedience and every distraction and every delusion. Isa alayhi salam is teaching us manners and he's teaching us as well that while these miracles are given as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is a righteous vessel that encompasses those miracles. And that when it came to this dunya, dunya in the eyes of Isa alayhi salam, the material world in the eyes of Isa alayhi salam, was not anything that could possibly taint or corrupt. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send His peace and blessings upon all of the messengers and prophets of Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to follow in the footsteps of the prophets and the messengers and the martyrs and the truthful ones and the righteous ones. And we ask Allah to allow them to be our companions in the highest level of Jannah al-Firdaus. Allahumma ameen aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum li sa'al muslimin fastaghfiru innahu wa al-ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allahumma fril mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amat. Innaka sami'un qareebun mujibu da'wat. Allahumma fril lana warhamna. Wa'afu anna wa la tu'adhibna. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam takhfir lana wa tarhamna. Lana kunana min al-khasirin. Allahumma innaka afu'un kareemun tuhibbu al-afu fa'afu anna. اللهم اغفر لي والدينا رب رحمهما كما ربونا صغارا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم انصر إخوان المستضعفين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا وإخواننا من بينهم سالمين عباد الله أن الله يأمر بالعد والإحسان وإيتاء بالقربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعماء يزد لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة